Hi, I'm Stone, and here is a video I'm making for my AP Biology project, uh, the Opera Model project. And I'm making this video on Minecraft, which is a basically a game like an online Lego. Now, uh, I'll start by explaining what an Opera is. An operon is a cluster of genes that could be turned on or off uh, in response to production in proteins. Like they're the, the genes, they're used to produce something. And uh, well, they're a method of gene control in mostly prokaryotic, pr prokaryotic cells, though some could be found in uh, certain eukaryotic cells. And these operons, uh, they're, they're, they have two types. There are the repressible types, which are normally on and could be turned off, or there are the inducible types, which are the exact opposite, in which they are normally off and could be turned on uh, when a certain protein is need to be produced. And uh, I have created an inducible model, I mean, in, inducible opera model, which is right here. Uh, well, at first glance, it is very colorful, and uh, there might be a lot to take in, but don't worry, I'll go through everything. I'll start off by explaining what every part is. This red zigzaggy thread, uh, up blocky, is the DNA, which is, in this case, the gene. And uh, we first have the regulatory gene, then the green section here is the promoter region, the yellow section is the operator region of the gene, and the light blue region here is the structural gene. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, although this whole thing is called an opera model, the real operon is only from the green part to the end of the dark, I mean, light blue part. And uh, this little dark blue part, the regulatory gene, it's not part of the operon. However, it does produce something that is in the operon which is the repressor protein, which is like this Lego, little yellow Lego shapes thing. Yeah, so I'll explain through an example. Imagine that I had just drank some milk, and as you know, milk contains lactose, uh, lactose and my body needs to break down these lactose uh, you know, particles. How do I do that? Well, I need certain proteins to break them down, and so this Let's imagine that this is a lactose protein produced uh, operon. This operon makes lactose proteins. I mean, that breaks down lactose, all right? So normally this operon is off because, well, I don't drink milk every second of my life, so I don't need to, you know, break down lactose every, uh, you know, all the time. And so producing lactose all the time would cost a lot of energy and resource, which are not beneficial to me. So this operon is only turned on when the body senses that there are the presence of lactose. And how does it do that? Well, this regulatory region, it, uh, it's this, this gene part, it codes for a specific mRNA, which then codes for a repressor protein. And this repressor protein is normally active, and the active shape is the one you see here. Uh, with two little things sticking up. And uh, in this model, the repressor protein binds to the operator gene, and uh, it, it blocks the RNA polymerase from advancing from the promoter region to the structural gene region. Um, yeah, so imagine this like little RNA polymerase, it's like a, it's like a little lightweight, it's like a sky train, all right? It's hang, hanging down. And uh, well, it's trying to go here, but this repressor protein is blocking it. So well, when I drink milk, the milk contains lactose, and it also contains this uh, isosome of lactose, which is called allolactate. And this allolactate count, I mean, acts as an inducer, uh, which is represented here with emerald blocks. This inducer it binds to the uh, repressor protein, making it inactive, as you can see here, which it doesn't have its two little, you know, nubs that's on top. And it caused the repressor protein to not be active by changing its shape, which means that it is no longer able to bind to the operator gene. And because of this, 
uh, the, the RNA polymerase will then be able to go past the operator region and go to the structural gene. The structural gene controls, I mean, contains all of the information needed to produce uh, the, uh, I mean, for the RNA polymerase to produce an mRNA sequence, which then, uh, through the help of ribosomes, produces these specific proteins that, in this case, will help me break down the lactose in my body. And uh, yeah, that is a brief explanation for this operon model. Now let's take a look at a little more practical version. So imagine that this little you know railway here is the the gene, this cluster of operon genes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I myself am a uh, RNA polymerase. All right, I'm going to start here. Hold on, that was for my test run. Yes, I'm going to start here, and oh, I'm stuck here. I started at the promoter region, and I'm stuck at the operator region because this repressor protein is blocking me. But I want to get past this part because I need to go to the structural gene. So what do I do? Well, I wait for uh, the presence of inducers. In this case, this block of redstone will act as an inducer. So if I place it right here. The repressor protein will be gone, and I am able to get past that, so I can successfully go to my uh, structural gene portion. And yeah, that's a simple little demonstration to show how it, it works. It's very abstract, but that gets the main idea. And uh, yeah, that is my presentation. I apologize if some of the words or my you know my voice is in general not that good it's because i have sore throat and i did many takes on this video and my throat hurts a lot so uh yeah well thank you for watching and you know i would really appreciate a good grade <laughs> have a good day